Hello everyone and welcome back to Jacket Educational Channel. So this is the part 16 for the unit wise complete syllabus of UGC NET Environmental Science and if you haven't checked the previous lessons you can check the link given in the description. So we are discussing every topic in detail. So without wasting much time let's get started. So first of all we will going to start the new topic which is the thermodynamics coming in the unit 1 and what is thermodynamics so thermo means from thermo that is we should know that is temperature related heat related so thermodynamics is a branch of science which deals with energy interaction and its effect on the system and the surrounding so energy mostly the heat energy its effect on the system and its surrounding that science which is dealing with that thing is called as thermodynamics so we'll know everything which is important for the UGC net environmental science in terms of and which questions are asked so for that we should be clear about the basics and the question is this slide we will be knowing about the system surroundings and boundary so what are these three things three terminology in the thermodynamics we will be knowing in this slide so let's start with the system so quantity of matter or a region in space chosen for study is called as system so if you want to study the thermodynamics of any system for example we can say that let this is the system that is the boiling of water so we can say that is a system where we want to study about the thermodynamics of that of that region or we can take the whole earth as the system if we are studying about the quantity of matter and its thermodynamics next thing coming up is the surroundings so what is the surrounding the mass or the region outside the system for example if this is the system we can say then the boundary outside that will be the surrounding so which is surrounding the system is known as surroundings so it is very simple next point is what is the boundary so the boundary is the real or the imaginary surface that separates the system from its surrounding so as you can see here here the system is separated by the surroundings with the help of this dark color that black color boundary which is separating the system from surroundings but in some cases there will be not a real boundary there will be imaginary boundary or surface that will be separating the system from its surroundings so now let's move to the next slide so here we will know about different kinds of system now this is the time to know about isolated system so isolated means jo bahut alag ho alag means neither mass nor energy can cross the selected boundary so if this is the boundary then from here if it is the system then from here nothing can be transferred neither the mass nor the energy so kuch bhi transfer nahi ho sakta hai is boundary ke bahar na hi mass na hi energy for example we can say the universe so everything inside the universe is the energy will be inside the boundary so nothing can move from our universe from all the planets and all it cannot move outside the boundary of the universe neither the energy nor the mass so other example is well insulated thermos bottle so thermos bottle we are using to keep the water cool or warm water so from that the energy cannot be transferred and the mass also cannot be transferred so it is an example of isolated system let's move to the next slide here we will know about the closed system so closed system means only energy can cross the selected boundary so you should be knowing that it is not isolated system it will look that closed means nothing will be transferred but in case of thermodynamics closed system ka matlab hota hai only energy can cross the selected boundary so as you can see here this is the boundary of the system closed system and here mass cannot move here it is mentioned no no mass cannot be transferred but energy can be transferred from this boundary in the closed system which is the terminology in the thermodynamics what is the example example is the piston cylinder arrangement without the valve so here you can say there is a cylinder and there is no piston the piston is there there is no valve sorry so there will be no valve but there is the cylinder inside that there will be the molecules of water or air you can say from there energy can transfer but the mass cannot transfer if the piston is there without the valve let's move to the next slide the next slide is about the open system so last slide we know about the closed system now we will know about the open system so open system means everything will be open obviously so that means both the mass and the energy can cross the selected boundary so you can see in this picture this is having the volume is controlled so mass can easily transfer from here and also the energy can transfer from here that is from boundary to the surrounding part so here is the piston cylinder same example but it is having the valve so if the valve is present then both mass and energy can cross the selected boundary but here in the case of closed system without valve the energy can only cross the boundary but mass cannot 
so i hope you are clear with this now let's move and know the properties of a system so this is also important most of the time the question are asked from the basics and these questions are already asked in the unit environmental science exam so we'll know about this so property of a system thermodynamic system can be intensive or extensive so intensive means the properties which are independent of the amount of mass so the amount of mass can vary it can be less it can be more but these properties which are independent of the mass are called as intensive properties of the system so what are they they are temperature pressure and density so these are the examples of intensive properties now we'll know about extensive property extensive properties ka matlab hota hai they varies directly with the mass so if we change the mass or if we change these properties then their mass will also change for example mass is also coming under the extensive property volume energy and the enthalpy so we'll know one by one for example you can see here this is a system where the mass is m volume is v temperature pressure and these things are density so now if we separate this container or this system then what will happen then mass will be divided because half of the mass will be in this place and half will be in this part similarly volume will be also divided but the temperature the pressure and the density they are the intensive property that's why they will remain the same because they are not having dependency if the mass is changed so mass is changed why because the border is given so mass is reduced to half so in this picture we came to know that extensive properties are mass and volume so they change when we change the mass but intensive properties they do not change even if we change the mass let's move to the next slide so here we will know about the specific properties so what are the specific properties so this is actually the term you should note down in the notes i hope you are writing all these things they are very important i am repeating one by one every time so the specific properties are the ratio of any extensive property so we learned about extensive property of a system so it is telling the ratio of any extensive property of a system to that of the mass of the system is called an average specific value of that property which is also called as intensive property because we have divided by mass so we'll get the intensive property so that are the specific properties that is the ratio of any extensive property by the mass of the system then it will give the average specific value or it is also known as intensive property for example the specific volume how to calculate if you divide the normal volume by mass then that volume will give the specific volume that's why it is called as specific properties so total energy how we will get we will get energy divided by mass that energy will be specific energy internal energy will how much internal energy will be when we divide the total internal energy divided by the mass of the system then we will get the internal energy which is the specific internal energy so these are the units you should note down specific volume meter cube per kg total energy that is specific total energy joules per kg and specific internal energy the unit is joules per kg so i hope you are clear with the specific properties now let's move to the next slide we will know about the state equilibrium and process in the thermodynamics so this is also important in the environmental chemistry unit so at the same time we are also dealing with that unit so it is very important to note down all this so before proceeding for this i would like to say that iso jahan bhi iso laga hoga this prefix iso where it is used it is designated for a property which remains constant iso means same isothermal isobaric so all this we will be knowing so start with isobaric process so in this process as we know that iso means it will be something will be constant so in the isobaric process the pressure is constant so you should note down in isobaric process pressure is constant that is delta p delta means change so change in pressure is equal to zero that means pressure is constant so in this graph you can know that volume is changing so initial volume final volume it is increasing but the pressure remains the same that is this is the line which is showing volume is increasing but the pressure remains same so it is the example of isobaric process now let's move to the next process that is isochoric or it is also known as isometric process iso means something will be similar something will be constant so here what is constant in case of isochoric process the volume is the constant so process during which the specific volume remains constant not the volume the specific volume remains the constant so here in this graph also you can see the volume is same but the pressure is increasing because it is isochoric process next is isothermal process so in this process what is happening a process during which the temperature t remains constant so here in case the temperature remains constant as you can see in this picture also temperature is constant but the volume is decreasing or increasing so here you should also make this table to understand more easily so the process are isobaric isothermal isochoric isentropic so what are the properties which are constant they are pressure 
in case of isobaric pressure is constant in case of isothermal temperature is constant in case of isochoric volume is constant and in case of ice entropic entropy is constant so ice entropic if you break it is isoentropic that means the entropy entropy is denoted by s so s means the entropy which is degree of randomness so delta s is constant delta s is zero in that case that is called as isentropic that means entropy is constant so we'll know here other two important things that is reversible process and irreversible process in the process of thermodynamics so these are also easy there are school level we have learned this but we have to recall them because questions are also coming from this first is reversible process what is that so the correct definition is it is defined as a process that once having take place it can be reversed following the same path as that of forward in doing so it leaves no change in the system or surrounding for example this is telling that if there is a compound a if it changes to b then it will also change to a if the same temperature same thing is given so it is reversible so it can come back to its original compound form next is irreversible process in which a process that cannot return both the system and surrounding to their original condition so in this case what happens is the system and the surrounding once it is changed in case of any process that is thermodynamic then it cannot come back to its original process that is called as irreversible process irreversible process i will give you an example that if you burn a fuel then our vehicle runs so it is not that after running the vehicle again we can get the fuel then if it is possible then we will be very much happy and there will be no lack of fuel in the world so that is irreversible process when the fuel is burned then it is generating energy so that we can be able to run our vehicle but we cannot take back the fuel once it is burned so it is an example of irreversible process so i hope this much is enough for this class so you should note down all these things and we will continue this thermodynamics process in the next video so if you want more such videos you can subscribe the channel and don't forget to hit the notification icon to get the updates as soon as i upload any video so see you guys in our next video till then keep smiling and believe in yourself